What kind of cataclysmic event does it take to break a rock that big off? As you can see, this face on this rock came off of that surface there. You can actually see that shelf. We move over. You can see this ledge here used to be where that shelf is. This whole thing fractured and fell off and moved like 12 feet. What does it take to do that? Okay, here we are at the tire store. As you can see, Teresa's surfing her phone. You're vlogged. <laughs> All right, we're gonna go over here and show you why we're at the tire store on Saturday. So, before I go on my trip Monday, that's what I gotta fix. Fortunately, these guys have all the gear, so they'll get it all took care of. Get outside and see things and enjoy life. Go out and, and do things. Get your camera gear out and use it. Because if you don't get it out, who will? How you doing today? What I want to do is I want to address a topic that got brought up in the comments of one of my other videos, and that is that a mirrorless camera would possibly be a better candidate for a beginner camera. Now, what we have here is the Sony a7 II. It's mirrorless. It has a flippy out of frame, which honestly doesn't really change anything all that much. But what it does have is real-time feedback on what's going to be captured on the card with this camera. What this allows me to do, though, is as I change my shutter speed, you can see the image getting darker. So if I'm not shooting a, a flash of any kind on here, then what's going to happen is, is that's going to be the image it captures. Of course, I have it in timer mode. Let's fix that. There, now. And you can see, if we play this image back, that's all we got was the little bit of reflections off of the shutter button. So if I just draw, as I bring this up, now you're going to get an image just like you were seeing on your screen. And with the EVF, you're gonna see the same thing in here that you see here. If I cover this up, you can see it comes on. There's a little center detects your face and it's right in here somewhere. I use the EVF because I have an astigmatism and I can actually adjust focus of the EVF to where I don't have to wear my reading glasses to be able to see the sharp image that I have to wear if I look on the back screen. This makes this camera really simple to use in manual mode. And, you know, you can set automatic modes. And if you want to run auto, you can do that. But with manual, I have absolute control of the camera and I can do what I want. So it allows me to do things like, I say I want to slow down the shutter speed and then dial up some ISO to make up for it. You know, that's not a great idea, but it works. You can do that, you know. Say I want to stop the aperture down. I'm just rolling this knob because it currently is assigned to the aperture. 
this knob is currently assigned to shutter speed and this dial on the back is assigned to ISO so I can make changes rapidly and on the fly. So, you know, I went to F10, I need some ISO, slow down my shutter speed, and I'm back. You know, and there you go, a good exposure again. So, to me, this kind of camera would e be easier to learn and use as opposed to this one down here. The coffee company that I've been getting all my awesome coffee at is going out of business tomorrow. Yeah, Figures. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more content like this, then hit subscribe. Especially if you like the kind of reviews I do, which is basically you know, I'm going to use the equipment and I'm not going to worry so much about a spec sheet or a, or a scientific analysis on a test chart. I'm going to shoot pictures with it and I'm going to see how they look. You know, so if you enjoyed that, like I said, hit subscribe and you'll get more of it. And if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give me a thumbs down. You know, let me know in the comments what you did and didn't like. We'll go from there. Thank you very much. We'll see y'all soon.